Well, that's an interesting question. When I started this study, I didn't know how to answer it. And what I've come to understand is that it involves, it's more than multidisciplinary. It's more than borrowing things from different fields and putting them together to solve a problem. It really goes beyond that and actually uh, creating new solutions, transcending disciplines, in the process creating something new. Mm -hmm. So that it isn't just, it doesn't just become a series of ad hoc solutions to problems and putting together things from different fields, mm -hmm. but creating a new field that's at the intersection of existing disciplines. So I can give an example from my own field. Uh, you know, back in the 1960s, uh, it, transistors were invented in 1940, mid 1940s, I believe and uh, vacuum tube electronics had been mature by that point. And people did things in sort of an ad hoc way for 15, 10 or 15 years. And then they realized that there's really something different here. And they invented a discipline called solid state electronics. They discovered the unifying principles. They wrote the textbooks. Uh, it basically you know, set the field in motion and, and set the stage for 60 years of innovation. Mm -hmm. So th I think that's what we're after. In con it's not just converging technologies, but converging knowledge and technologies, creating something new. So, you know, one of the things uh, you don't necessarily appreciate is that it's everywhere. You know, so, so take a look at your cell phone. Uh, it, it's more than just electronics. There's an amazing amount of technology already in these phones. Uh, not just digital electronics to do information processing, radio frequency electronics to do the communication, memory to do all of the storage, imaging to take pictures, gyroscopes, um, all kinds of uh, technologies that are integrated. And people have more and more opportunities. The opportunities um, to marry electronics with healthcare are just enormous. And part of the reason for that is that electronic devices have gotten so small that they're at the same length scale as biomolecules. So now you can have this direct fine grain interaction between biology and electronics. So people talk about things like having something the size of your cell phone be able to diagnose most of the common medical ailments that a person would get. To do most of your health care could be done with the device that you carry around. Mm -hmm. So lots of opportunities for electronics and health care, electronics and cognition. So one of the big challenges that we see is that electronic technology has gotten so sophisticated there are only three or four manufacturers in the world who can be in this game now. So the opportunity is presented by the fact that the devices have gotten, they've reached dimensions of nanoscale where they just naturally interface with biological materials. But the technology has gotten so sophisticated that it's not widely available. It's difficult in a university environment or for a small company, for example, now to marry this powerful electronics capability with new applications. Um, so what we're, what we're seeing is a need for infrastructure that provides the research community and the small businesses with state-of-the-art electronics capability that only a few companies have these days, but allows you to put on top of that platform completely different technologies that address different problems. That just doesn't exist. It's beyond the capability of any university to afford. So it's a you know, it's, it's an enabling infrastructure that we somehow have to provide to foster that kind of innovation. I think we need a new type of, uh, of manufacturing paradigm. The, the, the basic platform, so as Moore's Law continues and reaches its ultimate limit, we're going to have chips that have tens of billions of transistors on them and, and that just provide enormous capabilities, but that's going to be very expensive. Somehow we need a, an additive electronics manufacturing paradigm where you could take that technology that's produced by two or three or four companies in the world, but now a small company, it can trickle down, as you say, so a smaller company could add to that basic platform. You know, right now the way it works is that uh, uh, you know, the sophisticated chips are produced and you can design apps or, or do software level. But can you do hardware level additions to that platform? You know, can you add technology to the platform itself? Um, that will require a change in the manufacturing paradigm, but it would, it would marry the centralized paradigm with a more distributed additive paradigm. So that's one of the challenges that we need to think about addressing.